Hello, hello, and welcome to PD in your PJs. I'm Julie from Seesaw. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight to talk about family communication in grades three through five. And mostly I'm just honored that you would take time out of your busy work week to join us to talk about all the ways you can use Seesaw. I'm so excited to be turning it over now to Kara Brem, who is a frequent presenter for us and always does an amazing job with lots of great ideas for third through fifth grade teachers. How's it going, Kara? Going really well. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm excited to be here and share. And there we go. All right, I'm going to share my screen with everyone. So Julie, if you can just let me know when you can see it, that'd be great. Yep, we're good. We have you. Awesome. So again, my name is Kara Brem. I am a Seesaw ambassador. I taught third, fourth, and fifth grade for 19 years, and then I got a little wild hair, and now I teach seventh grade math, um, and I'm starting my second year doing that. But um, the examples and everything that I'm going to share with you here today are from my fourth grade classroom using Seesaw. Uh, I did have shared iPads and laptops, um, so just, just know that that's how, um, how I handle things in my classroom with my students, but I also connect my families. Um, I'm coming from you today from um, Cary, North Carolina, just outside of Raleigh. And if you would like to, feel free to connect with me on Twitter at Mrs. Brem Tweets. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have or share any feedback um, or just simply connect. That'd be great. All right, so we are here tonight to talk about how we're going to connect our families because the goal here, right, is to get those families engaged in our students' learning and be able to see that little window into our classrooms. But in order, they have to be connected to do that. I'm gonna share some um, time-saving ideas for communication. And I'm also going to talk to you the, a little bit about the difference between the student journal and where you might send a message that way versus posting something in the inbox through the Seesaw messages. Um, so we'll have some time for questions at the end. Uh, certainly if you do have a question and you don't wanna forget about it, you can type it in the um, the chat box, the question box that you have there, um, but we'll save those questions for the end. All right, so Seesaw is a little bit different um, for communication than other apps. You know, Seesaw is showing that student learning, that student engagement. Seesaw is super easy for all of our students to use at any age. And as we know as teachers, hopefully you've been using it a little bit or a whole lot to know that it saves you so much time when communicating um, to parents uh, through the visual updates. There's translation features we'll talk about. There's all of those really rich attachments for families to use as well as for you to use to share with families. And you already know those from you know what your students are already sharing and all those creative tools they're using. So you know what I'm going to show with you now share with you now are a whole bunch of screenshots and um, I'm going to actually take you into a live view in just a second to show this to you like really truly live. Uh, but these would be really good reference for later. This whole presentation, the recording and all of the slides will be sent to you through an email after we're done. So you can go back and listen to the recording or you view the slides and click on links and um, or maybe share it with, you know, a teacher friend who couldn't be here with us tonight. You're welcome to do that. Um, but they're really just good access for you to have and refresher if you need it. So when we're in our journal logged in as a teacher, um, what we can see here, you know, are the list of all of the students over here, our, our class roster, right? And on the left-hand side, you know, that's your student feed. Um, across the top here, you see the tabs that you might have, like your, the student journal, the activities, hopefully you're using that, um, and the, the inbox. But before we can even use this inbox, which we will get to, you need to make sure your families are connected. So you're going to use that plus button, that plus families at the bottom to connect your families. And if you've not ever connected your families before, uh, a little message will pop up like what you see here on my screen. And it will basically ask you, do you want to turn on family access? And you want to click that button so that families can see all the posts in their child's journal 
families get those notifications as soon as you approve posts, families immediately get a notification. And you know, then you can have that back and forth teacher family message going messaging going on. Um, something to really keep in mind and remember is that family members only see posts that their child is tagged in or posts that the teacher adds to everyone. So what that means is they're not just going to see Julie's posts if it's not Julie's parents. But if Kara and Julie are working on a project together, then they would, you know, Kara's parents would see that Julie and Kara worked on that together. So they'd see just that one together project and anything that's associated with that one together project. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, when you're in there, you'll also get a, a prompt once you say, yes, I want to allow families to connect. You'll get a prompt that's going to pop up, and um, I'll show you this again in a second live. But this is where you would choose to either print invitations to get to your family members, like actual paper copies. Um, it's where you would also um, get a sample email that you could copy and paste and share that um, through email to your families. Um, and all of that's kind of easy access. So what I want to do with you right now is go live so I can share more of this and really kind of dig in here with you. Now I'm going to go to a pretend class, but I will say everything in here is authentic from my fourth grade classroom and my fourth grade students. Um, so while it is pretend for our PD purposes only, all the students are made up, but all of the work is authentically fourth grade. So what you see in here is all of that. And you see here, um, you know, is the student view like you would have as the teacher. Um, you would also see over here, you know, these are the students in my classroom and all of their items. So, you know, here's Kara's items if we went to Kara's class, or excuse me, Kara's journal. And if we were going to add what, um, add Kara's family, we would click on that plus families in the lower right-hand corner. Now, we've added some families already, so I don't get that message, but you, if it's the first time, you would get that message like you just saw me um, share with you. Something really neat to point out here is um, the language. Now, these paper invites are, um, you're able to actually click on what language you might like to um, share the paper invitation in. And all of the invites would be translated into that, but um, an example might be that if you want them in English, right, you're going to click English. And then you're going to click on print paper invites and English is the default, of course. Um, and I just want to show you what comes up and then I'll show it to you in another language because I think that's that's pretty powerful. So here's just teacher directions that you get and then some just frequently asked questions um, just in case, you know, you forget the things that we talk about. Um, the other part this is kind of important. These are your currently connected parents. If you have no parents connected, you obviously won't get um, this, this part come out. But if some of your class, like I have eight students in this PD class, and only five of them have connected parents, and look, this one down here, she has two connected parents. So um, you can easily, quickly, you know, at a glance, see who's connected and then who you still need to send invites home with. So I would want to make sure here that I am only sending this paper invite home with Andrea because Andrea, um, you know, this is a special QR code that's made just for Andrea's parents or families to get directly to Andrea's journal and everything that Andrea posts. And it won't take it, take, you know, take them anywhere else but to Andrea's things. If um, Andrea's family wants to share this with Grandma or Aunt Lulu Bell or Uncle Shish Kebab, they are more than welcome to. They can simply share this piece of paper. There's also a link here that they could share if they wanted to, and all of that um, would certainly be accessible to them to share. You can share with, I believe it's 10 family members. Total can be under one child. So when you think about, you know, family situations or you have parents that live in, in different households and, you know, grandparents and other caregivers that might be involved, um, you might find it useful for 
um, for your students. But again, you're going to look here and here, this is Angela. I wouldn't want to give Angela's paper to anyone else but Angela. Um, so Seesaw creates all of these awesome letters for us. And all we have to do is hit print and presto changeo, all the work is done for us. But I had a student in my class who came to me after um, after I sent home the letters in English and he said, Mrs. Brown, my mom can't connect. And I said, okay, well, what's the problem? Like trying, you know, trying to sh troubleshoot. And he said, well, you know, I try my best and, but I, I can't really translate it the way that it needs to be translated. And she speaks Mandarin Chinese. And so I went to Seesaw and I thought, I know Chinese is in there. And so I asked him, you know, is what I print the simplified? Would I print the traditional? And he said, oh, you need to print the simplified. So I went here and it was just for one student. And what you'll see is that it does put all of the letters into that language. Um, but if I only needed one student and only I would go to whatever one student I might need. Like if I only need Angela and I could look over here and say, oh, well, she's on page four. So then I would just type in a four and that would just print Angela's in Chinese. So um, I think that's really helpful uh, when you take a look at all the languages that are listed here. Certainly that's not a list of every language out there, but it's um, you know about 10 or so commonly um, spoken languages that uh, Seesaw has provided already for you. There's also the sample email that's here as well. Um, so this, well, look, and it's in Chinese too. Check that out. If I wanted to change that, notice I can go right here. It's probably in Chinese because I just clicked on Chinese. Let's go back and let's click English. You can certainly copy and paste this, you know, copy the whole email, and then you can put it right into your, um, your email and send it out. You can change it any way that you see fit. Um, sometimes just even changing the subject line to get their attention because they still, you know, parents or families still don't know what Seesaw is. Um, you know, that might be a, a, just a quick tip is to, you know, make it fit for your needs, your classroom, and how you think you can, you know, market it to your parents, so to speak. All right. So um, we hit on how to use that plus button in the lower right-hand corner in order to print out those invitations. Let's click on that one more time how to get those invitations, change the language, and also how to um, make sure we're matching up those names when we print them out as well. Um, one of the things that um, we want to kind of make sure we're hitting on as well here, I'm gonna go back, is when we have, um, when we have an opportunity to, um, you know, be one-on-one -on -one or with our families and we're trying to talk to them or even talk to your students since they are upper elementary, they, they might get this. Um, there is a special family app. You and your students may be using the Seesaw Class app, but there is a special family app that if they are using a smartphone or a tablet, they can download the family app. It's set up similarly, yet a little bit different than um, how the class app is set up because it has a different purpose. Families can also visit the, the Seesaw website, which is that app.seesaw.me, and then they would just certainly choose that they are a family member and not a student or a parent, or excuse me, a teacher. Um, so just reminding them um, that they're looking for that family app. It is available on all kinds of platforms. So that's you know certainly something that if you need to market that way to your families to get them connected, um, it is available on all the platforms that um, you know you can access with regular Seesaw class app as well. And what we have here on the left is just a quick screenshot of what it would look like. You know, this was from the app store, but um, you can see if you just type in Seesaw in the search bar, two are gonna come up. And I, you know, I tell my students, when you go home, make sure you tell them you're my family, so you are going to use a family app. I'm the one who goes to class, so I'm going to use the class app. Uh, there's also a video here that gives a, a nice tour of the family app. So, you know, 
even once you have your families connected, this might be something that you choose to share with them, or if you have an opportunity to share the short video with them, you're all together for a parent night, for example, at the beginning of the school year, that might be something that you would want, want to share. Um, and again, these slides are just as little reminders when you get it, since you won't have me there demoing it live for you, but you know, you can translate those invitations in up to 10 languages and that you want to make sure when you're sending home or passing out the papers that you check the name at the top of each invite to make sure you're sending the correct invite home like double check that uh, one of the things that i did in my fourth grade classroom is i would print out those papers i would fold the paper but i would fold it up until like right below their name here and then i would staple it so that they knew it was important um, because it was stapled, you know, all those important stapled papers come home from school. And then, you know, right here, you could see their name at the top and we had Friday folders. So I would put it in their Friday folders and then um, I knew most families would certainly see that. Do all families read that? No. So you might have to be a little persistent, but, um, you know, you have to know your families and know your population as well and how you you might want to get them to connect um, so when that family member gets it they they simply scan the qr code from the seesaw family app i know i had a couple um, students who came to me and said my mom can't get it to work my dad can't get it to work and i said well just use the url the url is that website that um that i shared with you it's printed on the invitation let me go back here and show you from your computer down here. So you can say, well, you know, if you can't get that to work, don't worry about it. But from your computer, you can go there as well and they can log in um, that way using this. If they do that though, know that they're choosing names from a list. So um, they're choosing the whole class list from there, which one is their child. And the teacher gets a notification that says, hey, do you want to um, approve this person at this email or this parents with this name um, for this, you know, for Andrea or for Kara or for Michael in your classroom? And then you would certainly check that and say, oh yeah, that matches the one that I have on record here. So, yep, we're gonna use that and um, I'll approve them. So it's a quick connection. You just need to make sure that you're doing your due diligence by making sure that that's really, you know, someone who is connected with the family. Um, and if you're ever unsure, you ask the family, you, you know, send them a message and say, hey, I just want to make sure uh, that would certainly certainly be helpful. Um, you know, when you are setting up um, everything, we want to make sure that we're saving everyone time with what we're doing, because if you're connecting families, it's, it's for a, a really important reason. Right. So you want to make sure. Um, that when you're setting up these you know these messaging systems and and all of that and we'll we'll hit back on that in just a second um that you have a reason to set them up and and to share one of the things that i always make sure that i do is i have something in their journal before i have a family member connect so i'm gonna go back here and just show you do you see every student in my list has at least one thing if not two or more, depends on the student, right? Um, and I don't have a lot in my whole journal. I only have 13 items here, but if Antonio's parents connect, they already have two things to, um, to look at. They have something that I shared with everyone about our whole class when uh, during our fall fun day. And then they also have something that Antonio did with his group. He did it with all of these other children in their group in science class and so when antonio's mom goes there she's gonna you know click on it and she's gonna be able to see this is what antonio did hopefully if it's a video hear or see antonio in that video but also realize that there's other people here so if you know other people can like it other parents will see it the parents of all those students will see that um, and just kind of keep that in mind when you have um you know you're connecting your families all right let's go back here and let's talk about um, some time saving communication ideas one of the things that i know so many teachers do is um, send notes home and newsletters home and sign up links home and you know here are my top three favorite time saving tips for you and i'm going to go through all three of them and kind of share them with you 
The first one is, let me show you, using Seesaw as quick notes for reminders to families. So for example, using the note tool itself to type up a note just like you would from, um, you know, type up an email, but it's not long. And if you're communicating with your families in Seesaw and students are posting, you typing that up in Seesaw just gets them there more often. They're more likely to read what you put in Seesaw if that's the only place you're putting things. So if they're like, well, I didn't know. You just said, well, you know, I, I've mentioned how I'm posting everything in Seesaw and then hopefully they can, um, you know, be connected in that way. But even something just really quick and simple, like I was walking through the hallway in my school and this was out in front of the art teacher's room. They were, you know, he was collecting cereal boxes and magazines and bottle caps for a recycling project so that the students could create art on Earth Day. So I literally took a picture of it on our walk back from PE to our classroom. And then I added it as a message so families could see that in Seesaw. I shared the picture, I shared like, what, two sentences, but it's those quick, simple messages. You know, you don't have to write up a thousand things. Parents would appreciate that so much more than having to read a laundry list of what's going on because you lost them at line four. So, um, you know, a second idea to make um, your life easier and get parents engaged is audio notes and audio newsletters. So, um, you know, videos is certainly one thing, audio is another thing, but kind of a, even a mix of the two. Uh, here I have an example, and you're welcome to when you get these, click on them. They all, all of these have, um, you can watch the whole thing, the, the whole two, two minutes and 15 seconds. But what I did was I um, typed up a bunch of words in um, a word cloud app, and then these words went with everything we were doing all week long. So you can see we were working on vivid vocabulary. We were working on North Carolina history, growing characters and language arts and character traits, uh, factors in math, sensory details in our writing, um, North Carolina symbols. You can see all of the, oh, prime. So there's math. Um, you can kind of see a little bit in there, but I hit on all of those words in an audio recording. Again, I save the picture and then I just add that audio to it. Hi everyone, I just wanted to touch base and fill you in on the week that we've had and just know that in reading we're still working on reading intensely and growing ideas but we're also starting a transition into growing characters. Okay so again you will have access to kind of take a look at that. Um, another quick way is to use um, a picture like that's my Bravo picture and I send just a super quick message with that Bravo. Bravo, Kennedy. Keep working. All right. So you can whatever message you want to do. I do a quick a quick note with the Bravo picture, and then tell the students one thing that I'm you know kind of really impressed with that they did that week. And that's just you know it helps the students, but it also shows the parents you're engaged. Do I do that for everyone? No. I do it for one or two students every week and I keep a list who did I hit on who did I not hit um, so I can make sure that I make my rounds and if I really have to send out a second one because someone just went truly above and beyond it's so quick like it doesn't even take me two minutes to do that um, and another is app smashing even with um, shadow puppet so if you're interested in more of what that might look like again it's audio with pictures and using um, Shadow Puppet EDU and kind of app smashing with that. But using that audio is so, you know, I had a parent come to me and say, thank you for doing that because it's so much easier for me to just listen to you while I'm washing the dishes than stop and take time to read that email. So, you know, think about that as, you know, as a parent myself who is, you know, has children in elementary school using Seesaw, ugh, it's just such a time saver when they do that. Um, so my third tip is all those links for those signups for those things, right? You know the things, right? Whether it's the conferences or here comes the activity and you need people to send in the frosting and the, you know, 
the graham crackers and whatever, you can put those links in there. And one of the things that you can also do, and what I have here, I have the link in there, but I also audio recorded in here. So I'm gonna quick share just, you know, just a quick audio clip of that. Hi everyone, as part of our upcoming geometry unit, we are going to be building geo bread houses. So I take the time and, and you know, it's not very long, a minute and a half, but I kind of just hit on the really important things from here that you really hope they read. But now, you know, you have a quick backup audio. Um, I've even done video, like a quick video of our field trip form because you have to turn the back over and put your insurance information on the back um, at the school that I'm at. So if I do that quick video that takes like 45 seconds to show them, hey, there is a back and we have to have this or your kid can't go on the trip. I was so much more successful in getting those forms back. It was just amazing. All right. So um, this was so powerful um you know for my classroom uh i live in an area that has a very diverse population and um if the parents have their devices set to their um native language this parent their device was set to spanish if my you know chinese parent has their device set to um their device setting on Chinese so that they, you know, they have the Chinese um, keyboard or the Spanish keyboard or what have you. Anything I type will be translated for them into their language. And then anything they type in their language will be translated to me in, um, in my language. So it's automatically happens. There's nothing you need to do to set that up. And it is phenomenal. I had one parent participate. Um, his his native language was Spanish and he participated. He was my most active parent participating in Seesaw that I've ever had. And like, you know, I put or his son would post something, I'd approve it and bam, he was on there commenting. He was, you know, sending messages, but and it wasn't like overkill. He was just so excited to share and be a part of his child's learning. If you want to learn a little bit more about this, um, when you get the slides, you can certainly click there and, and learn a little bit more. All right, let's talk here about the difference between the um, journal and the inbox okay so um a couple quick things uh, if you remember i'm going to go back to my actual class here if you remember i have this which is the student journal right and all of this is the student journal and these are all andrea's things in her journal and then i have something at the top here called the inbox okay so i'm going to click on that for just a second so that's what I'm talking about right now is that inbox. Okay, and what's the difference between the journal and the inbox? So um, the journal is for that student portfolio work. It's showing that growth over time. It's capturing their learning. It's their responses to any Seesaw activities that you might post. It's any personal photos just of them. Um, so if you are thinking well where do i put this where should this go should this go in the journal or should it go in the inbox the journal is showcasing the student the inbox is family and teacher communication it's where i put my newsletter it's where i put my hey don't forget we have a field trip coming up reminder hey don't forget your lunch tomorrow for that field trip reminder oh pe is tomorrow wear your shoes wear your tennis shoes reminder um, if I'm taking whole class photos, then I might put um, photos of the class in there like, oh, look, here's our guest presenter with, you know, came in today to talk about such and such, and he brought the live animals, and here's pictures of us learning with him. I would put those photos in, um, in through the inbox, in an announcement through the inbox. If I had a special message I wanted to send just to one parent, like the Bravo I showed you, I would go through the inbox to send that one-on-one -on -one personal message, okay? So I'm gonna go back into the inbox and go back into my class here real quick. So here's that inbox. Again, I'll just make sure I click on the, you know, the little speech bubbles, that's my inbox. 
And what I can see here is I can see these names, but these are not names from, you know, my students, they are their parents' names. So underneath is the student name, and I can see that Kara has two parents connected, Brandon and, oh, mom, mom must have changed her screen name, right? That's called your display name, and parents can do that. They can change it to say whatever they want. Um, you know, certainly, you know, saying mom is fine, but you need to know, okay, whose mom is that? Oh, that's Kara's, Kara's mom. Um, and, you know, maybe John is also John Jr., right? So you can see their names there as well. But all of all of those, um, you know, don't seem like very many compared to that. Well, that's because I don't have all of my parents connected yet. If I had all of them connected, I would have um, eight students represented. That's the size of my class. But what I want to show you here is that if I have, um, and I'm, I'm trying to send an announcement to all of my families, like, hey, PE is tomorrow, I can do that in one of two ways. Up at the top, I have that big green plus add sign, right? So I'm going to click on that, and here's my menu that pops up as a teacher. At the very bottom, this is where I would send an announcement to all of my parents. I can choose who to send it to. I can send it to all the family members who are connected, right? Which are not all of my parents. So that's something to keep in mind. If I say, um, you know, wear your shoes for PE whoop, tomorrow, and then I can send it now, I could add an attachment and maybe I wanna take a picture of a shoe so they know what kind of shoes I'm talking about, um, you know, whatever I want to, want to do there. And I can send it and it's going to go to all of the parents. Now they get immediate notification, but wait, I don't have Michael's parents connected, but if Michael's parents joined, they wouldn't see any of these old announcements that, that I have. And I think that's really, really important to remember that if Michael's parents joined, um, you know, he, they wouldn't see anything that was old announcements. Um, you would have to start fresh at that point, and um, from that point, oh, look at that, something popped up in my inbox. But at that point, they would see, um, hey, you know, um, Michael doesn't have anything in here, but anything new that you added would be put in there. All right, so if I get a little red bubble here that pops up, that's going to say, I got some new message. And I can see right here, oh, mom sent a message. Oh, who's mom? Oh, that's Kara's mom. She sent a message. And if I go to the tab over here, there's a message tab and a notification tab. If I click on that message tab, whoop, hold on one second. There we go. Oh, did you see that kind of popped up? And I'll click on mom. And I can see, there we go, mom said, Thanks so much for the latest update. Do you think we can meet to discuss Kara's progress? Now, this is a message just from mom, and the message goes just to me, the teacher. So if I respond and message mom, notice I'm not messaging anyone else but mom, I, would, I might say, absolutely. Right, does Friday at 8 a.m. work for you? And then I send it. I'm not sending it to my whole class. I sent that directly to mom. Okay, who's mom? Well, that was Kara's mom. And she could send me one back. Parents and teachers can have individual like one-to-one -one messages back and forth. Parents can only send messages to the teacher. They cannot send messages to the whole class list. Um, so if you know, Andrea's family wanted to invite everyone to Andrea's birthday party, they cannot use Seesaw to do that. Um, so don't worry about that. But Andrea's parents could email or sorry, message me, excuse me, they can message me and then I can message back. And it's a private one to one messaging okay, that you have the option of having here. All right. So let's go back here and just a few other really quick things. I want to make sure that, you know, you get to bed on time tonight. Um, so who can see what? I think I've kind of mentioned this a little bit. If you have that students can see each other work turned on, again, that's in the wrench, right, turned on, families only see work that their child is tagged in, right? And if all approved comments from families are visible to the journal for all of the students, so what that means is if, you know, you have this turned on and Julie and Kara work together, then Julie and Kara's parents can see everything that they worked on together 
any comments that were made to those posts, okay? So families can see all the comments made on any work their child is tagged in. And remember that difference, we have announcements and then we have private messages. Announcements are only one way from the teacher to the family members, yeah, and then private messages can only are only visible between the teacher and the one family member who sent it. And Kara's mom and Kara's dad are both connected, but that was just a one-to-one -one with Kara's mom. I might want to copy and paste that same message to Kara's dad, depending on you know what their situation is. They might appreciate both receiving that message, or maybe mom just handles it. All right, if you need information um, about back to school night and um, the family's website, there is information located here for you. You can just click on this and it'll you know, take you into um, a link that will show you more about how to use, um, use this with your families, maybe at a back to school night and get them all hooked up. But just you know, some quick tips, make sure again that something has been posted already before connecting your families, even if it's just one thing. Um, and then another idea is if you have not already started using the activities in Seesaw, there are certainly activities appropriate for your grade level that you could use to put in there. Um, there are the first five activities um, to use. And if you're, you know, there's PD around it, you can click on that link when you get the slides. Um, you might also choose to post a welcome video or a, a picture of the classroom if you're going to do this like early in the school year or just a quick welcome to Seesaw, welcome to, you know, um, to us using this uh, for communication purposes, video from you to the parents so that there's something already already in the journal so when they, um, you know, go in the first time they can access it. If you have questions about any of this, you can certainly go to help.seesaw.me and ask a question or type in the search or go to the assistant, uh, that little question mark in the bottom right hand corner and get any help with connecting your families. Um, and right now, if there's any time for questions, I would love to, to certainly take those. If you're not already connected in the Seesaw community, here are different ways you can do that and ways that you can connect with me as well. All right, Julie, do we have any questions out there? Hey, Kara. Yeah, we have a couple of good ones coming in and one really pertinent topic that you and I could probably together both clarify. Can you go back to the slide that shows um, journal versus inbox, like the two columns? Yeah. So Stacy is asking a really good question, and we haven't talked about blogs a lot in our brand new to Seesaw webinars either. She's asking, okay, so here's journal, here's inbox, and then what's the role of blog? And I think I can clarify that a little, and then Kara, you can definitely weigh in too. So remember, Stacy, that anything that goes to your class blog starts in your journal. So your blog is made up by things that you select that students have created and posted in their journal. It's not necessarily designed for your communication with your students' families. That's what that inbox tab is for. So I would recommend if you have a newsletter or some sort of brochure or flyer that that goes to families through the inbox. The blog is kind of designed for some other stakeholders in your school community to give your students feedback or for you to connect with um, students around the globe. You know, last names don't show on that blog. Um, it can be password protected if you want. And it's kind of like its own unique URL then that you could have some other people visit and give your students feedback or just look at some of your students' creation. So like if you had a principal or some one um, at a community organization that wanted to see some things your kids were creating, the blog would be a good place for that. I think if your family members are connected, when you want to send something like a newsletter, that's going to go as an announcement in the inbox, but everything in the blog starts in the journal. Anything else to add to that, Kara? Do you think I'm explaining it? No, no, I think you said it. I think you said it great. Um, one thing I did tell my students because in fourth grade we did use the blog feature for a couple years, and um, my personal rule for the blog was, you may not share anything that has your first and last name on it in the blog. You may not share any pictures of anyone's face, even if it's not intentional, like taking a picture of you know something they create and in the background there's other students working no student faces um, or anything recognizable features is how I talked to them about it so that was just my way of using it because we did connect with other classrooms and um, 
you know, I wanted it to be more about their work than about, you know, their selfie. So. Right. Absolutely. That's and that's actually a great tip. That's a great tip. Um, I sometimes see on social media people posting a lot of photographs of students where you can see like the name tag on their desk, you know, so that you can easily see their first and last name along with their photos. So I think that's just good digital citizenship in general. So Stacy's follow up question about that is, um, would you ever have blog access coming through the family app? And the thing is, um, the thing is, Stacy, like, if your families are already connected, if they could access the blog from the family app, they wouldn't be seeing anything they haven't already seen because all of the posts on the blog have already started in the journal. And the other thing we like to tell people too is that um, your parents and family members don't get notifications when something goes to the blog. So we really want you connecting those families to your class, not just having them check the blog. But other classrooms and other stakeholders in your school community can check the blog to see like some things you're doing in your classroom. Um, but I think the, the family school home communication can go all through the inbox is kind of how I would answer that. Um, Kara, you're getting lots of like thanks and positive feedback in the question box. I can tell you that. Um, bear with me as I kind of scan through to see if there's something else we're missing. Be sure to um, type in anything else you're thinking about. So Stacy's follow up about the blogs. Um, and thank you for asking this, Stacy. This is a really good point. We could probably incorporate some of this into this webinar in the future in thinking about the difference between the inbox and the blog. Um, so a, a teacher isn't going to write a blog post per se, but like you said, Stacy, a teacher could write a note or create something that they put in the journal that then they could choose to add to the blog. Again, if your family members are connected though, they would have already seen it if it was tagged to their student. So even if you tagged it to everyone, if it's in the journal, they would have already seen it. But yes, in theory, if it's important to you to have a URL that people are going to and you want to post to it as the teacher, that would be the workaround for sure to post to the journal and then add it to the blog for sure. And I'm just gonna add on that as well. The only time I would think you would need or want to share the blog URL with your families in the inbox, maybe as an announcement, would be like, hey, um, here is our blog, like we have one, this is what it is, and this is how we're going to use it in our classroom to connect with others. You are welcome as a family member to share it with your family if you don't want them connected to see everything and you just want to, you know have them connected to see the blog, like send it to grandma. Here, grandma, check out the blog because so-and-so's, you know, latest entry is on there. I think that's totally um, well said. And I think like different teachers are going to interpret it differently. Like a lot of teachers use the Seesaw blogs for their global connected classroom. We just had a webinar about global read aloud and the connected blogs is one of the things that a lot of teachers do this time of year for that event. Um, but, you know, some teachers might think of the blog as like their best of, like their wow work. So we're only going to take things from the journal and put it on the blog if it meets a certain specification or criteria. Um, so that's just kind of up to you as a teacher. But like I just I guess what I'm trying to make sure people understand is like your primary communication with families is probably through announcements and messages in the inbox more so than the blog post because they do not get a notification when something has been added to the blog. But that's like really good feedback though, Kara. Hey, we still have a few minutes if anybody wants to add a question. I'm kind of, I've slowed up on the question box for now, but if you're still here and you have a question for Kara, feel free to type it in. We appreciate your time tonight and you are a really good audience. Okay, Kara, I don't think we have anything coming in. I really appreciate your time. You did an awesome job, Kara, and thanks to all of you for joining us. We hope to see you in another Seesaw webinar again really soon. Oh, and I'm gonna add real quick, there will be a survey at the end. So thank you so much for taking the time to fill that out. And if you have any suggestions, uh, like I already wrote myself a note about the blog and adding it to this slide. If you have any suggestions about anything that you wish you saw in here, uh, please put them in there. We do take the time to read them and try to make things better just for you. Thank you, Kara. Thanks for reminding me about that. Yes, we appreciate your feedback on the survey and thank you so much for your time tonight. And thank you too, Kara. This was awesome. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye.